We have a lot of ride symbols to talk about. Basically led to this, it's then led to this thing. We arrive at the actual set. And about two years later, I have my transition. <laughs> What's up, YouTubers? Hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic, and welcome into another episode of Behind the Drums. This is a chance for me to basically show you some of the sounds and the specs of specific pieces of gear, but also tell you the story of how that piece of gear ended up in my collection. Now, that piece of gear this time is a cymbal, not a drum, and I want to make it clear, this is not the story of the transition ride, but I do think it's going to be important to just give you a little bit of insight on how the ride came to be, the prototyping process, and the cymbals that led up to it. But this really is about the story of my specific transition ride, what the signatures on the bottom are, and how I basically stole the symbol. story of creating my own signature ride with Minel basically starts with the ride that I was playing and why I was unhappy with it. And unhappy is a pretty strong word. I just wanted it to be slightly different. So this is the ride I was playing at the time. This is the 20 inch extra dry medium ride and it sounds like this. And you can hear it's an amazing symbol, very clean, massively articulate, but it's pretty thick and there's really no crashability. And that's due to the fact that one, it's weight and it's thickness, and two, there's no lathing on the bottom. That lathing is what allows the symbol to have some wash. So this is a very dry symbol. And what was happening at the time was that I was constantly asking my A&R, hey, can you ship me the washiest extra dry ride you have? Because I really did love the symbol and I loved the articulation. And I loved, most importantly, the pure tone of it. I just needed to be able to crash on the symbol as well. And so in all honesty, he shipped me probably about eight or so. And I would always ship them back if they weren't the ones, but he would go into the warehouse and just go through the symbols and send me the washiest extra dry ride that he could find. And then eventually he just said, do you want to prototype a symbol? If, if, we're, if we're eight symbols in, this clearly isn't the right symbol for you. So I thought, yeah, that sounds like an absolute dream. So we started working on what had no name at the time, but eventually became the transition ride. So the first step was to have a conversation with the product development team over in Germany at Meinl and talk to them about what I wanted. And basically I wanted a washy version of that ride. And we looked at different rides in the lineup just to make sure there wasn't something that existed like what I wanted. We couldn't find it. And so we started prototyping. And the first step was to put some lathing on the 20 inch extra dry ride. So the very first prototype is this right here. This is a 20 inch extra dry medium ride, but it has lathing. So that lathing, fine little grooves. Now, like I said, if we make that lathing really thick, take off a lot of metal, shave off a lot of metal, this is gonna become a crash symbol. So this lathing is extremely fine. And this was the first one they sent me. And it sounds like this. So as cool as it was to hear an extra dry ride with a bit more wash to it, 
it was a bit thin sounding. We had lost the character of the ride symbol. Also, the bell wasn't as pronounced. And I felt that it really, to me, didn't sound like a ride with a lot of wash. It sounded like a thick crash. And I know those two things probably sound really similar in your mind, but they are different. A thick crash and a washy ride are different things for sure, or at least they are in my mind. And so I knew that we weren't quite there yet. So the next thing I suggested was, can we try this an inch bigger? Can we try a 21? So they said, we can make a 22 out of the blanks we have. We can make a 20 out of the blanks we have, but 21, we can't just make one of them. It's gonna be a big deal. Are you sure you wanna do this? And I was like, I think so. We got to this. This was the first thing. This is the 21 inch prototype ride. Uh, my signature is on the top. It doesn't have a name yet. It says custom symbol shop at the top. The lathing is there, still nice and fine. The hammer marks are a little bit deeper. We're starting to get a little more trash out of it um, and get that darker, nastier sound. And this was the one that as soon as I got it, I was like, yeah. At that point we were about 95% there and it was really truly starting to become my dream ride cymbal, the sound that was always stuck in my head. And that's like our goal as drummers is that our drums and our cymbals and everything we do sounds like the things that are in our head. So we were almost there, just needed to make a couple harmonic tweaks. I just wanted a little bit more wash. I also wanted the bell to be a tiny bit more pronounced. I also visually needed it to stand out from the rest of the extra dry line. So Benny at the time had the sand series, so I knew that sand blasting was off the table because he kind of had that whole thing going. The extra dry line looked how I wanted my symbol to look. I just needed to stand out just the tiniest bit. So Minel suggested, what if we just do one layer of polish on the top and just give it a little bit of shine so it'll still be as visually as dark and nasty as the extra dry line, but it'll almost look like you put a little bit of gloss on it. And that led to this. So this is the first approved version of the transition ride, but it wasn't called the transition ride. If you look really close, you can see up here at the top, it says 21 inch 2451 ride. And if you've ever attended drum camp, or at least you did in the first few years, you would know that that was the bathroom code originally. So 2451 was what was on our bathroom outside. That's how you got in. So that was the original thing. This was gonna be called the 2451 ride. But Minel talked to their sales reps and all the sales reps basically revolted. They said, we do not wanna go around the world selling a symbol that's named after Mike Johnston's potty code, which I fully understand. So I was on board with that. So how did we get to the transition ride or at least the name? Now that we've got the sound, now that we've got the look, I was on the phone with Mitch, the uh, head of Minel USA. And he just said, well, just tell me what the ride does. And I was like, well, the whole point of it is to have this seamless transition between articulate playing and then a wide open crash. And literally without any extra feedback or conversation, he was like, then just call it the transition ride. And I just thought, yeah, that's why you're in the position you're in. That's why you're the head of Minel USA. So after all the trial and error, we got to this, the 21 inch transition ride. Like I said, this is the story about that transition ride. That's the one from my drum set. That's the one that I travel with. That is my transition ride. Yes, I have a few more of them around the studio and one at home, but if somebody said, where's your ride symbol, this is the one I'm talking about. Now I'm sure you notice there's a bunch of signatures on the bottom. We'll get to that later in this video. But first of all, how did I get this symbol? Well, I was at Memphis Drum Shop recording a ton of videos for what was at the time called mysymbol.com. And on my second day there, I had to film 25 transition rides. And if you guys have never been to mysymbol.com or what's now memphisdrumshop.com, you actually on their website are listening to the exact symbol you'll be buying. And if you buy that symbol, they take that off their website. So I was demoing each one of these transition rides and it was an awesome day. I love doing that because these are handmade in Turkey. They do have a tiny bit of variation between them. They all have the same characteristics, but each one has its own voice. 
Well, we were on about, I don't know, symbol 22, symbol 23. And that's when this one came up. Now, visually, as soon as I saw it, it had this huge, almost like dragon tail birthmark that I just thought, yeah. This is, this is visually like, this was probably my favorite one that I had seen so far. And I just fell in love with it. And then I played it. And as soon as I played it, like I said, they all have slight variations. They all have their own voice. This was the voice to me. This was, if, if something had to embody the transition ride, this was the one. <laughs> started playing it and as I'm playing it, I'm being filmed from all angles I'm playing it and I can't show you the video obviously because they never posted it here's why as I'm playing it I'm just thinking I don't know how we do this but I need to I need to leave with this symbol I'm taking the symbol so we're done filming a little bit I do my drum solo I speak to the camera and you know saying you can get this symbol at my symbol.com say cut and then I look over to the owner of Memphis drum shop Jim Pettit and I go Jim how do we work this out? What's the process if I need to take this home? And he was like, what do you mean? I'm like, I, I don't, I mean, I can buy it. We can, I don't know what we do, but I have to have this symbol. And he was like, no problem at all. You talk to Minel. as long as they're cool with it, they'll just ship us another one. And so basically I kind of stole this symbol because I was like, this is the one I have to have this. And it's been on my kit ever since. I think that was probably like six or seven years ago. It was a while back. I don't know what that set was. <laughs> now on to the signatures. I get asked about it all the time. There are a ton of signatures on the bottom of this ride symbol. And people always ask if they're from my favorite drummers or from random celebrity. There, it's nothing like that at all. So a lot of times when I do clinics or drum festivals, a lot of people will bring their gear, like my signature snare, and they'll have me sign the inside of the shell, or they'll bring the transition ride, and they'll have me sign the transition ride. And when you're signing someone's gear, especially something as valuable as that, there's this weight that comes to it, and you, you really start to care about your signature and your penmanship, and there's a feeling of like, wow, that was really cool. I, I mean, I know how much my ride symbol means to me, and this person just let me take a Sharpie and put my name on it. This is amazing. And that feeling was so incredible. I just thought like, well, they should feel like that too. So I started having anyone that ever asked me to sign their transition ride, I then asked them to sign my transition ride. So all of these signatures are from people at clinics and drum festivals and master classes that have asked me to sign their transition ride. This may sound a little hippie-ish, but I think that stuff matters, you know, when when I'm playing the symbol, especially when I'm out of the country in a foreign place and maybe I just don't feel 100 percent myself. I always travel with my own symbols or I try to at least. And the reason why is because having that and having all those signatures on the bottom, there's just extra vibe there where you're just like, thanks, guys. I know you're in this with me and it just makes me feel a little bit more at home. So now you know a little bit more about the prototyping process and how we got to the transition ride, but more specifically, you know the story of my transition ride.